Welcome to part one of High Heels, Cigarettes, and Secrets. I am your host, Kelly Marie Hart. I will be taking you through the story. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. YouTube will tell you when the next video is ready. At the beginning of every video, I am going to fill in a little backstory for you. And so, for example, if you watch the trailer, you might have been asking yourself, who's this guy? Is it Kelly's mother? No. Is it her mom's lover? No. It was her best friend, Steven. He was the most dashing, handsome man I had ever seen, except for Magnum P.I. He had big brown eyes that would just sparkle. His voice was a unique blend of like a sexy rock star mixed with like a rugged undertone and then like just like a hint of Bobby Brady going through puberty. Remember that? Kind of like that. Steven was successful, wealthy, handsome, smart, funny. He dressed and smelled like the million bucks he had in the bank. And he was the only one who could keep my mom in line, giving it to her straight like only a gay man can do. Mm -hmm. You'll hear more about Stephen in the story. Let's get started. As the sounds of the all-American home rang around me, I felt no satisfaction. Instead, I felt boredom. The two boys were doing their homework and my beautiful blonde blue-eyed baby girl is down for the night and the sound of the dishwasher is winding down. Soon the boys will go to bed after their apple pie desserts and the only sound left will be the sound of the TV set accompanied by my husband's snoring. Every night he'd prostrate himself on the couch and between nine and 10, he'd be sound asleep. After 18 years of watching and listening to him snore, I grew crazy. Thoughts of how I could stop his snoring became bizarre. I thought of him as a noisy piece of furniture. I tried many ways to keep him awake and I always got the same reaction, that of a bothered corpse. He'd say, leave me alone, I'm happy. I finally agreed to do just that and I left him alone. Once the All-American family was settled for the night, I'd run from the TV set and the snoring husband I found a retreat in the back corner of my neighborhood cocktail lounge. I'd sit facing the back wall, no phones, no questions, no kids, and best of all, no snoring husband that I was absolutely ready to kill. Here I could relax, think and wonder. To my right stood a jukebox. Juke, is that how you say it? Jukebox, jukebox? You get what I'm saying. There to my right stood that thing, playing songs that bring back all those forgotten memories of the past. As I sipped my wine, I could write my thoughts on cocktail napkins and read my own mind, so to speak. Trying to figure out life, my unhappiness, the feeling of emptiness, and the complexities of myself. The more Rip Van Winkle would saw wood, the more I would run to my little corner of the world to wonder why. I gave up writing on cocktail napkins and I bought one of those blank books to write in. This went on for about a year. During the time spent there, I would be approached by men asking me to dance, to buy me a drink, or if they could just join me for a conversation. I always answered with, no thank you, but thank you for asking me. This response was programmed. I never really paid much attention to who they were or what they looked like. I became very good friends with Laverne, the cocktail waitress, a one of a kind special lady. She would always set a mock drink beside me on the table. Everyone would think I was waiting for someone and stay away. She would also inform anyone that offered to buy me a drink and that I preferred to be left alone to write. And with her help, I built a wall around me. Then 
One night in February, as I was writing in my favorite corner, I heard, Would you like to dance? <laughs> I'm just kidding. He probably didn't sound like that. I'll start over. I heard, Would you like to dance? As programmed, I had answered with the usual. He returned again and asked if he might buy me a drink. I looked up and smiled again, and the usual answer came out. Yet he returned to say, may I sit and talk to you? I answered with, no thank you. I don't mean to be rude, but I really enjoy being alone to think and write. He left, only to return with two glasses of wine. He sat down and said, I'm going to sit here anyway. Here's a glass of wine. You can drink it or not. I don't really care. And in that moment, he broke down my wall and took control. The most positive attitude I've ever come across. I instantly loved it. He sat there looking straight in my eye as my mouth fell silent and open. I felt I could read his stare saying, well, lady, the ball's in your court. Make up your mind. Are you leaving or are you staying? My mouth formed a smile. And at that moment he said, I do wish you'd stay, as if he read my mind. I couldn't believe it. We talked for hours, understanding each other. He made me feel important, and the conversation excited my mind. At 2 a.m., I got up to leave and say my goodbye. He said, I'd like to see you again. I really enjoyed talking to you. I feel like I've known you forever. I didn't know what to say. I was telling myself, forget it, go home but I couldn't let go completely. So I created an obstacle to give myself time to think and see if he really meant he wanted to see me. If so, he'd grab onto the only way. I told him the following week, I would be attending a psychology class at the adult school on Tuesday night at 7.30 in room 9B. And for him to remember all of this after consuming three hours of wine, it would be like it was meant to be. We said our good nights and I left wondering. And I'm gonna leave you wondering until next time. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll know when the next video is ready. And I would love for you to post comments, questions, so that I can fill in the backstory for you. Until next time.